Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Holy Our brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate uh, Tuesday, the 20th week in Ordinary Time. Gospel message is about wealth in our life and what we consider to be the true treasure in our respective lives and how what the world knows as wealth can sometimes be a true challenge for us. With that in mind, let us take a few moments now acknowledging those times when we have sinned and in so doing prepare ourselves to enter fully into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because you are haughty of heart, you say, A God am I. I occupy a godly throne in the heart of the sea. And yet you are a man and not a God. However, you may think yourself like a God. Oh yes, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that is beyond you. But your wisdom and your intelligence, you have made riches for yourself. You have put gold and silver into your treasures. But your great wisdom applied to your trading, you have heaped up your riches. Your heart has grown haughty with your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have thought yourself to be the mind of a God, therefore I will bring against you foreigners, the most barbarous of the nations. They shall draw their swords against your beatus wisdom. They shall run th through them. They shall them through their splendid appeal. They shall thrust you down to the pit, there to die a bloody corpse in the heart of the sea. Will you then say, I am a god? When you face your murderers? No, you are man, not a god. Hand it over to those who will slay you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of the foreigners, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. The Word of the Lord. It is I who deal death and give life. It is I who deal death and give life. I would have said, I will make an end of them and blot out their name from men's memories. Had I not feared the insolence of their enemies, feared that these foes would mistakenly boast. It is I who deal death and give life. Our own hand won the victory. The Lord had nothing to do with it, for they are a people devoid of reason, having no understanding. It is I who deal out death and give life. 
How can one man rout a thousand, or two men put ten thousand to flight, unless it is because their rock sold them, and the Lord delivered them up? It is I who deal death and give life. Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who deal death and give life. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ became poor, although he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Man, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for men, this is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, You who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel? And everyone who has come up, who has given up houses, or brothers or sisters, or father or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> financial abundance really throughout our readings today is a potential roadblock for the kingdom of heaven and in the eyes of the Lord. We are both the Old Testament reading from Ezekiel and this gospel reading from the gospel of Matthew. The rich young man, we have to remember, is the gospel passage immediately before what we hear today. And we all remember the young man who came to Jesus and he told them all the good things he had done, living the commandments, praying, the list went on and on. And he says to Christ, what more must I do? And he was a rich young man. That's why he's titled that way. And Jesus tells him to go and give to the poor his riches. Go and sell them. We never hear of him again. That idea that riches are a stumbling block. The point is made also in this gospel with that unforgettable image of a camel passing through the eye of a needle. For us, um, we just go, oh yeah, that can't happen. Uh, Jesus is really drawing on something that the people locally would have known. To get into Jerusalem or any city that was walled at night, the, the passage at the public gate was closed. So a human being could get in, but still they had to kind of crouch down a little bit. Wasn't big at all. Now a camel, a camel could get in but it had to get down on its knees and had to get the upper portion of its body through and kind of had to almost drag the latter part through that gate. Not easy, but it could be done. But Jesus took that example that was always a challenge because if you left the camels out, due to wild animals and things, they could be threatened to agree, but they might even walk away. But the fact is you wanted them to come inside. It's where there was feed, uh, water, all those things could be taken care of. Now, Jesus takes that, and so to speak, it's not just getting into the main city wall, particularly Jerusalem, but the eye of a needle. 
And the response comes back, you know, the eye of a needle. Um, and the disciples heard this and said, who then can be saved? Which is a valid question on their part. They put it back to the Lord. And what are you talking about? Who's going to be saved then? And Christ comes back and says, okay, it's not possible, but it is with God. With God, all things are possible. And Jesus rolls that out before them. And as astonished they were, his, his response is twofold. First, it talks about the impossibility for human beings to enter the kingdom on their own, not something they're going to do totally on their own. It, they need the help of God, and they have to recognize that. But for God and with God, nothing, uh, you know, all things are possible. Nothing's impossible, he tells them. So it says, listen, this is a journey in life that it's, you're not a singular traveler. There are others on that road, and the Lord needs to be with us because that is how we're going to move into eternal life. And here Peter seeks an affirmation, an affirmation for himself and the other disciples. We heard that. Peter says, then Peter said in reply, we've given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? And I think it really says in the gospel message here, totally understanding of the sacrifices that human beings make. And many times it's contrary to their very nature, that humanness, that we have to call upon the spiritual within. We have to call upon the Lord in, to, to make us more than we are. But Peter knows that he and his brother apostles have done it. And he wants to know, and it's totally human feeling, Lord, you know, don't forget us. We've worked hard. Like many of you good people who tune in, you, you, you work hard to live a good life. Are we sinless? No, we're human. But we've struggled in difficult situations. We've even reached out to help others so they can kind of reform their life, so they can turn more toward the Lord. That's what's going on here. But Peter, uh, he's a little bit worried about it. So basically, Jesus gives him a response. Listen, 12 tribes of Israel, each one of you is going to be there at the time of the Messiah. And in the kingly rule of the Messiah, they will be part of it. And in addition to that reign of the Messiah, in the general promise that you know, all will receive a reward for those who, who journey with the Lord, who strive to be like that. We have to ask ourselves, why was Christ warning so drastically and making a point about wealth here. And he, he hits a couple other things very hard at different points of the gospel. But truly, in this section, he is really looking at the fact that and saying to the human beings, don't let that wealth get in your way, because it can. You know, those possessions, they can come to possess you, Christ is saying. And he really, to go on further with that, he's saying, you are my possession. I've come to save you. And in that saving, he asks for our cooperation. He asks for our understanding of who we are as children of God, not just as money moguls. Yes, it takes money to live in life and parents to support the children, give them an education and to live. But we have a responsibility toward others not just ourselves. And many times that doesn't stop with just those who are important to us, or should I say even known to us. It means we have to reach out to brothers and sisters in need who we possibly don't even know. We meet them maybe along the way of life, and we help them out. But what about those that we're called to help that we're never going to meet? We're not going to meet them. But we have the resources to give to an organization that reaches out, particularly during this time of the pandemic. So many of the parishes throughout the diocese, so generous to collect food that it needs to be given out. And we've seen those donations. Uh, a lot of times people just coming dropping off the food, not in a position yet maybe <clears throat> where they feel the safety of coming into a larger environment, but still they come when they know there is a collection, and give that food. The Lord sees the good. 
that you do, that I do, that they do. And ask for us to take from those wealth resources that we have and give to the others. Help the others in some way. Wealth has the potential really to, do, to be a blessing and to do many goods. But then we need to pause. We need to reflect and also acknowledge that wealth has the potential really to be an obstacle to that man or woman of God that the Lord calls us to be. Um, wealth buys a lot of sinful, evil things in life. It does. And allows individuals to enter into that realm. Whereas if they didn't have those resources, they, they, they wouldn't, they couldn't. And how do we treat others when we have that wealth? You know, we have, there's that phrase that the right hand should know what the left hand is doing. Uh, I think sometimes that's true when we uh, enter into the realm of helping brothers and sisters. Don't worry about, well, what is the right hand going to have? No, take the other hand. Don't worry about what will be there and give to those who are in need. Help those who, for whatever reason, just can't quite put it together, whether it's talent pool, whether it's just the, the knocks in life, can't quite lift themselves up by their bootstrings, but need a little bit of help to do it. We who have been able to do it, we who may have a little bit more than we need, we need to take that and look to the others. The last thing that I think we see in this gospel is the immense encouragement that Jesus offers to those who make sacrifice for the sake of Christ. You know, I, I highlight that because I think we're all called to be those who make sacrifices for the sake of Christ, for the sake of the presence of Christ in those around us, for individuals made just like us, you and me, in the image and likeness of God. So let's see this message of Christ for what it is. It is a cautionary warning. Be careful. Money is not the begin all and the end of all. Certainly it's not the end. It may allow us to begin some good works for others and in our own life, but it can't be the end. The end is Jesus Christ. And how we live our life in that wealth, we have to hear the caution of Christ. As is said in one other part of the gospel, if you have ears, you ought to hear. May we hear the message in today's gospel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Together we lift up our hearts in prayer to God with these our needs and petitions this day. For Pope Francis, may God give him strength as he shares Christ's message with the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, may the love of God through the witnesses of the church touch every heart on earth. And may those who have the means to do good for others be witnesses. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered trials, particularly during this time of the pandemic, May the Lord look graciously upon their needs and grant them relief and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the people of this faith community, for those who tune into this live stream, may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire in them charity and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died or will die today, particularly those as a result of the pandemic, May they be welcomed into the light of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and merciful God, we put our lives before you. We put our trust in you. We ask you to hear these prayers, and, that is, and as always, we do ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in Christ's divinity as he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet your thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. <clears throat> An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time 
receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in, in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.